What is de-schooling? This so-called movement clusters around the work of Goodman, Illich and Rima. It flourished in the late 1960s and early 1970s, but that isn't to say that the de-schooling movement hasn't been carried forward and changed into the present day. The members of this so-called movement, although they diverged in their attitudes to contemporary schooling, were united in the belief that the present schooling system has to be replaced by something else. They disliked the class-driven divides and reliance upon industrialization. And they all share somewhat a romantic cue concerning human nature. They're in debt to the ideas of Rousseau, C. Emile, and progressive educational theories more generally. Goodman believed, for example, that our schooling, and this is mostly the Anglophone countries he's talking about, was failing both in its own terms and in terms of what he saw as a proper education, which should be taken up by questions of truth, beauty, learning, and culture. He also held that schools, both because of their institutional form and the teaching processes that they adopt, for example, instruction rather than discovery learning, suppress the individuality of their students in the attempt to socialize them to national norms and national needs. Goodman also put forward the idea that contemporary schooling should be replaced with mini schools for children up to the age of 12, where about 28 children are taught, if this is the right word to continue using, by up to four adults and the curriculum would be derived from the children's actual interests. From age 12 and up, he recommends that formal schooling should be replaced by an apprenticeship system, which would take in everything from car mechanics to philosophy. Ivan Illich, author of Deschooling Society and Everett Rima, author of School is Dead, have their own separate focus critiques of schooling which are different from Goodman's. They say that schools fail, in their view, first because they try to do too much by serving four separate but related aims or functions, that is pastoral care, social role selection, indoctrination and education, and that these things interact in ways that actually warp some of their ends, most notably the idea of education itself. The educational system, because of the success of others, has ends which are bound up with social control, they contend. Moreover, they add that the present schooling system presents a false image of knowledge and learning, one that suggests that learning relies exclusively upon teaching, and that at the whim of this education system as a whole, that knowledge can be graded in ways that aren't inappropriate, but they are, according to Illich and Rima. Moreover, they add that there's a hidden curriculum in which schools teach children implicit values, such as the virtue of being taught, or, as you may have seen, teaching children to enter a classroom in silence, which teaches them implicitly a value of obedience to authority. This, they contend, overall impedes their individuality and results in a present intolerable society, as well as the horrors of the 20th century. For Relic, schools should be replaced by so-called networks and learning webs. For instance, record and information systems and skill exchanges, which are centers that will provide access to skill models. While Illich didn't really live long enough to see the internet flourish into what it is today, he may have had a accepting view of what the internet could open up for de-schooling, or he may have had a more nuanced critique. Barrow from 1978 has a necessary, if dated, critique of the de-schooling movement. He suggests that they distort the empirical evidence and they rely mostly on anecdotal evidence. He suggests that just because some people will become literate outside schools, in their homes, for example, and others fail to become literate in schools, this does not mean that schooling is not the most efficient way to promote mass literacy. Illich has anarchist or radical libertarian sympathies that many might not go along with. However, while Barrow is entirely aware of the social and educational dangers that the de-schoolers put forward, he himself doesn't really emphasize one aspect of these dangers too precisely. It is fair to say though that schooling systems both in Europe and America and elsewhere too do fail a large percentage of the young people going through them. That is failure understood as 
the ability to raise up the latent potential for the young people themselves and the potential for choice in the curriculum and what the school can offer. In Ilikum Rima's judgment, the present schooling system is guilty of imbuing children with inappropriate values to the extent that the hidden curriculum offers obedience to authority, for example, as good because perhaps some would say it leads to the ordinary functioning and reproduction of society. In focusing upon the so-called extreme claims of the de-schooling movement, some may forget that their modest claims are actually their most important as we may become complacent concerning the success of our school system, when in fact, schooling does not end with schools themselves.